Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Boise Pete. I'm the Emotion AI evangelist here at Affectiva. And welcome to Emotion AI Developer Day. Uh, this is the last technical session of the day on track two. Uh, before I get into it, I will remind everyone that uh, this session is being recorded so that we can um, bring it back to you at a later time for you to review. If you have any questions during the talk, just to write them or type them in on the Q&A box at the bottom right-hand corner of the WebEx window. If you have any technical issues during the talk, experience any technical problems, email us at devday at affectiva.com. So uh, I'm going to talk a little while about integrating our Mac or iOS SDKs into your apps. So this is going to be focused on those of you who are Mac, OS, or iOS developers. I'll bring up my screen here in just a second. I'm going to share a couple of slides, and then I'll get into some live coding. All right, let's see here. So, do you see my screen, everyone? Should see it soon. Is it up? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so um, get to the next slide here. There we go. So, the platforms that I'm going to focus on for this talk are iOS and macOS. Um, I see this poll question just came up on my screen. There we go, got it. Okay, yeah, so everyone, there's a poll up there about your favorite language. Speaking of languages, I'm going to touch on both Swift and Objective-C for the uh, for the talk. I'm going to start with Objective-C and then go into Swift. <clears throat> there are four ways to use our SDK right now. Camera-driven, which is what I'm going to focus on in this talk, where the camera actually takes over the uh, the app and pushes the frames automatically for you. And then I will go client, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about client driven. That's where you can actually push the frames yourself. You can manage the camera on your own. The other way is a still image where you give us an image and we analyze the faces and the emotions for that still image. And then of course a video file which you supply on the device and we can analyze that as well. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with CocoaPods, but we have recently moved over to this in our most recent version of the SDK. This is a dependency manager that is supported, uh, or supports rather Xcode. It is a very easy way to distribute third-party libraries and frameworks. We are now hooked into CocoaPods, and I'll show you that in just a second. Of course, uh, if you've been watching any of our other talks, you understand about our technology and what we do. We basically identify faces inside of video streams or live cameras. We look at those faces and we determine the emotional state of those faces over time and return things like emotions, expressions, and emoticons. I'm going to focus on this talk specifically on emotions because they're fairly easy to do, and uh, we'll see that in the demo that I'll do shortly. I will now leave the slide and I will go to Xcode here where I will create a new project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on Mac OS. And the reason I am is because uh, iOS requires the use of a real device and I can't easily share that on my screen, if I, especially if I want to use the camera. Uh, the, uh, the simulator for iOS does not support uh, the camera, uh, so I couldn't show you that. But I will build a fairly simple uh, demo for, um, for Mac OS and show you how to integrate. Actually, before I go there, I want to go to CocoaPods. And I want to talk about how we enter the CocoaPods. So go to CocoaPods.org. If we can get there, there we go. Again, as I said, CocoaPods is a dependency manager, and all you have to do is type in Affectiva, actually Actex, sorry. And you'll see that there are two pods here. There's one for iOS and one for OS 10. I'll click on the OS 10 one, and you can see right here, the instructions tell you exactly what to do to create something called a pod file. So I'm going to do that. And this is really somewhat a manual process. You have to do it one time, one time only, uh, but it's something you have to do. Before I do that, though, I'll actually go back to Xcode. I'm going to create a new Mac OS 10 Cocoa application. I'm going to just call this uh, demo dev live test. And I'm going to use Objective-C as my language for now. We'll talk about Swift in just a second, or in a bit. And I'm going to create it in this directory. All right, so now I've got the sample application up and running with all of the template code that Apple provides. 
I'm going to now in this uh, project, I'm going to create a file, just a blank file, and I'm going to call it pod file. And it's going to live inside this folder here. Now I'm going to paste in, this is the contents that we saw back in the CocoaPods folder. And what the CocoaPods pod file is, it's basically a file that describes what it is that, uh, what what aspect of dependencies you have for your app. You have a target name, and of course you'll have to change this, and the name will be demo dev live test. And we have a pod called aptx SDK OS10. That's our uh, uh, the name of our SDK. This communicates with CocoaPods and lets the lets us know which uh, which framework we're depending on. So anyway, all you have to do is change the target name. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go to the command line, and I'm going to CD into uh, this folder. Now you see the pod file is here. This is the pod file that I've just created. I'll cat it for you, and indeed it shows the same content as we have here in the window. The thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a command called pod install. And of course, you need to have CocoaPods installed to do this. It's very simple to do through a Ruby command, but this has already been done. And you'll notice when I run it, it's going to uh, download our SDK for OS 10. It's going to uh, integrate it, and it's going to tell you to close any Xcode sections and open the XC workspace. So I'm going to close this section here. Now I don't have it open. And if you look inside of this folder, uh, there is a new file created by the pod command called demo dev live test XC workspace. I'm going to open that. So you close the Xcode project that might have been created and you work with the workspace. That's how you do it. I'm going to build the app. And right now you can see that I've built it and uh, the template code builds without any problem, which is good. But obviously we haven't done anything that we're going to integrate the SDK. <laughs> so we have the view controller here. And if I run the app, let me actually do that. It's a very, very simple app, right? Just a dead window does nothing. We're going to make a... Uh, bit of a change here so that we have something more interactive. So in the uh, view did load, I'm going to actually, in the header file for this, I'm going to import aptx slash aptx. This is our header file for aptx SDK. As you can see, I just built it. Everything's fine. I'm going to create a property, and I'm going to make it uh, strong. This is, of course, Objective-C syntax. I'm going to create something called an AFDX detector. Now, this object is responsible for, responsible for bringing the functionality I'm going to create an AFDX detector. I'm going to allocate it and initialize it with this method here. This poll keeps popping up, by the way. And for uh, Expediency, I'm going to use a deprecated method, if you don't mind, uh, but apologies. But uh, anyway, I'll show you some other code shortly that uh, does work without deprecation. So we're going to be our own delegate. We're going to receive uh, messages from our detector. I'm going to say that we want the front camera, which is that's all we really have on a Mac. And I want to do a maximum detection, a face detection of one. I'm only interested in detecting one face. Uh, let's see, I'm going to turn on detect all emotions, and I'm going to start the detector. So these three lines bring the detector up and get things started. Now, I need to adhere to a delegate method, I'm sorry, a, a protocol inside of the header file called AFDX detector delegate, at which time, and I apologize if I'm going too fast, I'll kind of show that again. I need to adhere to this this uh, protocol because there will be a callback method that I will be needing to implement that will tell me when a frame is ready, and it's this method right here. Okay, so every time a frame is analyzed from the camera, we get a callback method. And this callback method is going to tell us uh, several things. It's going to tell us how many faces have been found, the image, and the time. So I'm going to uh, actually go back to over here to my main storyboard. And I'm going to build a couple of things real quick inside of 
of my UI so that we can see things happening. I'm going to drag an image view here. I don't know if you can see that, but that's an actual image view. I'm going to quickly set up the constraints, which is a, uh, a UI uh, uh, control. And I'm going to drag a text field. And I'm going to bring it up here. And I'm also uh, anchor it up to the top. And what I'm doing is I'm building a UI so that you can see uh, what happens as things change. I'm going to also draw the background, and I'm going to make the background color uh, yellow so it'll stand out. There we go. I'm going to go back to my code, and I'm going to add a couple of things here. I'm going to add a property. I'll the outlet, uh, NS image view, image view, and also another property for the text field that I built. And I will hook those up using uh, Interface Builder. So there's my view controller. So what I'm doing now is I'm tying in some uh, instance methods, actually some properties to some controls so that we can see things happen. Okay, now that that's wired up, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to write this code. If faces is equal to nil, and I'll explain to you shortly why I'm doing this. I'm going to actually have a if else clause. So this method gets called twice in the case of the camera detector where we're using here. The camera is we're called twice because we want to give you the opportunity to do something with images that are not processed. We process by default five frames per second, even though the camera may be emitting at say 24, 30 frames per second. So this method will be called with faces nil an image being set to the current image from the camera. So what I'll do here is I'll say I want the image views image to be equal to image here. And what should happen is when I build this and run it, you will see my image here. And you do. Here I am. You can see my face. The label, of course, is just showing the word label. So what's happening here, if I go back in the code, is that for whatever the frame rate of the camera is, by default 30 frames a second, the detector is started. It's taken over the camera, and it's calling this callback with faces nil. And with, in, in that case, I'm setting the image in the image view, which I just populated here in the storyboard earlier, to my face, whatever's coming from the camera. The magic happens when faces is not ill. So currently, and I can come over here and be very specific about it, I can set the detector uh, max process rate equal to five frames per second, which is the default, which means that five times a second, this method will be called with faces not equal to nil, but set to a dictionary. And that dictionary is going to contain the number of faces that have been found in the frame. If there haven't been any faces found in the frame, faces will not be nil. It will simply be an empty dictionary. So I'm going to say if faces dot, well, first of all, I'm going to capture, capture the state of the dictionary. So I'm going to get an array uh, equals self dot, I'm sorry, faces dot all values. So I'm going to capture the values from that dictionary that comes in. I'm going to set the count. I'm going to uh, carry the count over and say, if the count is greater than zero, meaning there I found a face, then I'm going to pull that face out. So I'm going to say face is equal to a uh, object at index zero. So I'm only expecting one face because here on line 17, I told the detector I was only interested in one face. If I put 10 or 5 or something else here, I could get up to five faces, but this is pretty safe code based on the constraints that we're here. So now what I'm going to do is I've got this aspect space object. We'll take a look at it real quick. And the aspect space object is another object inside of aspect.h that contains a number of other objects, orientation, appearance, appearance, emojis, emotions, and expressions. So what we can do is we can pull out of that face object information about that face. What is that face doing? Is it emoting? joy, sadness, anger, any type of emotion or any type of expression. And I'm specifically interested in pulling out joy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a float. And I'm going to say the float joy is equal to face.emotions.joy. You see that the autocomplete is actually finding those, uh, those, those values for me. Now, this number, this float, is a number between 0 and 100. Zero means that the confidence level of me expressing joy is, is just gone. It's not there. It's zero. A hundred means that 
the classifier is pretty confident that I'm joyful. So what should happen is once I set the text field to the value, then you should see that number climb as I smile or I emit a joy in my face. So now remember we have the text field over here called text field. So I'm going to say self dot text field dot string value is equal to in a string, and apologies, this is a verbose but this is subject to C, a string with format. And I'm going to use uh, the string, the uh, floating point formatter. We'll just use it one. And there we go. So the idea is that I'll pull out the face information, I'll pull out the joy value in line 42, and on line 43, I will set the label that I've tied to my UI to the value of joy. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Things look good so far. There we go. So as you can see, the value is zero. So you'll notice that when I smiled, the value climbed to around 99. So I'll do it again. There you go. So that's a quick demo of Mac OS X doing, uh, using Joy to tickle a label. The same, exact same code, by the way, work in iOS. There's really no difference except for the setting up of the UI. Uh, real quick, I just want to pull up a project in Swift that I did. Exactly the same thing. In fact, I'll run it. Here it is right now. Looks the same, except we have two floating points, uh, two, uh, two precision values here. And again, you can see that value climb. Just a couple of things about Swift. Uh, if you use Swift, you have to create something called a bridging header because we are an Objective-C SDK. But Apple has made this very, very easy to use, very easy to do. You uh, set up your bridging header. You just import aptx.h and it. You go to your target settings for your target. And in the build settings, you type in bridge, specify, excuse me, the patch of the bridging header so that the compiler knows about it. Uh, our SDK is actually quite easy to use in Swift. So as you can see, this is Swift code as opposed to Objective-C code, but it's, uh, it's pretty much doing the same thing. The other thing I want to point out is that I used a deprecated method to kind of speed things up in my demo. The method that you want to use if you're using the camera uh, is the one that you have to pass the AV capture device in yourself. The reason we're doing that is because on Mac OS X, typically there is one camera built into the, to the uh, Mac itself. You might have an external camera. You should be able to find that camera on your own and pass the AV Foundation capture device yourself. Uh, so we're moving toward that in our model for the SDK. So that's pretty much it for the live coding part. I'll go back to my slide and just go over one more slide that I want to talk about, and that is where do you go from here? We've invested a bit of time creating source code examples on GitHub. If you go to this link, you will see a number of different examples for iOS, Mac OS, Android, and so forth. It's a great way to get started. Uh, we have an app called AppDexMe for both iOS and OS X that you can start with. It happens to be written Objective-C, but it's a great way to, uh, to begin using our SDK.